We don't tend to think about gases dissolving in liquids, but they actually do, and it's actually really important to life as well. If we think of nitrogen and oxygen, uh, they're both linear in shape, so they're not, uh, so they're both nonpolar. And so in water, then, they're only going to have weak dipole-dipole forces or weak dipole-induced dipole forces, dispersion forces with those water molecules. So in order for them to dissolve in water, it has to be a fairly low temperature because that way those gas molecules are fairly slowed down and so they can kind of get trapped in between those water molecules. If we heat them up, though, kinetic energy increases, those water molecules and the uh, gas molecules are moving faster, so they tend to come out of the liquid. And that's why the solubility of gases actually decreases with temperature. This is different from most salts because most salts the solubility increases with temperature. With gases it always decreases with temperature. Fishermen and women, this will actually come in handy for you. So when it's hot outside, the best place to fish is actually down low. The reason the fish are hanging out down at the bottom isn't because they want to get to the cooler water where it feels nicer. It's actually because at the colder areas, oxygen is more soluble in the water. And yes, fish breathe oxygen too. They don't breathe it like we do. They actually breathe it from the water. So dissolved oxygen is important to them. If they're hanging around the top, they're hanging in areas where there's less oxygen. So it's like you standing on top of a mountain. It's going to be a lot harder for you to move around, run around, because there's less air up there. But if you come down to a lower elevation, there's more oxygen for you to breathe. And so therefore, you can do a lot more physical activity. Fish are the same way. They go to the colder areas because it's easier for them to breathe. That's why areas like the Arctic that we think of as inhabitable by us are actually full of fish. That's why Alaska is a very, very popular fishing ground. Colder waters, more oxygen, more marine life. Where it's important to you is with soda pop. So if you let your can of pop get warm, it tends to go flat. The reason is, is it warms up. The CO2 that's dissolved inside of there will come out of the solution as the kinetic energy increases. That's why cold pop is better than warm pop. It's also more refreshing that way. Thermal pollution as well. So a lot of industrial processes use water to cool down their equipment. And so they'll pull it from the lakes, the rivers, whatever's around them, use it to cool down the equipment, then go back out. But unfortunately, when that water goes back out, it's warmer. And so it's going to warm up whatever uh, body of water it goes back into when it warms up. That's going to decrease the amount of oxygen that can be dissolved. Therefore, it's going to kind of kill fish off in that area. And so thermal pollution is just as bad or sometimes as bad as dumping chemicals into the water. They both will kill fish or other marine life. Another factor that affects solubility with gases is what's called Henry's Law. So Henry's Law just says that the gas uh, solubility is directly proportional to the partial pressure of that gas above the solution. So the higher a pressure is of a particular gas above a solution, the more it will dissolve inside. So that's why when you seal off a bottle of pop, you're going to have a pressure of CO2 above that bottle of pop, and that pressure is going to cause the solubility to increase. If you leave the bottle of pop open to the elements, that means the pressure of CO2 above it is going to decrease because the CO2 can float away. If it decreases, the solubility also decreases, and what do you know? It goes flat. So if we look at a little piston system right here, we've got our liquid down there. And in this case, we've got a little piston that we have up fairly high, and we have a certain amount of gas. So the pressure right here of this gas, since the volume is higher, is going to be fairly low. And so there's going to be a smaller amount of gas dissolved inside of the liquid. Over here then, when we push that piston down, we're going to increase the pressure because when volume goes down, pressure goes up. And if we decrease the pressure, you see that more of that gas is going to be dissolved inside of the liquid. So here's your soda pop analogy when you've got your closed bottle. The pressure of CO2 above the bottle in that little area is four atmospheres, which means it's four times higher than atmospheric pressure. Then when we open that bottle of pop, well, hey, now the pressure outside is going to be a lot lower, and so the fizz is going to come out, and eventually the pressure inside is going to match the pressure outside, so we wind up with a much, much lower concentration. Concentration always decreases with pressure, but it does matter for the particular gas and the types of intermolecular forces it'll form. And so, you, so we see something like hydrogen, which has very, very weak intermolecular forces, is not going to have a high solubility, even with really, really high pressures. As opposed to something like nitrous oxide, which is going to be polar, is going to have a very, very high concentration or very, very high uh, solubility as you increase the pressure.